I love my life, I love my body, I love myself, yeah! Welcome to The Shaft Show. My mission is to find world peace through intimacy. And my vision is to make Stockholm the epicenter of connection and intimacy. And I'm doing this by creating these sober events called Conscious Ways to Connect. Um, so today's episode is a message to Shaft. How to survive a winter in Stockholm, how to not get ill. Um, I, often, I always get a cold as soon as I arrive here. I get cysts on my eyeballs, I get uh, ulcers on my eyeballs, I get boils on my skin. Um, it's horrible. Terrible things happen to me when I arrive from the Tantra bubbles in hot locations to a major city. And I get terrible skin and everything is terrible. And these white things on my nails, like, you know, what's going on? What's going on? I decided not to play the victim this time. I decided I am going to survive this winter. I will be like Sherlock Holmes and discover how to overcome all of these illnesses because it's not something related to stress, it's not something related to the relationship with my father, it's not something related to any emotional stuff, it is just a simple thing of what I'm putting in my mouth and how cold and hot the atmosphere is. Um, I'm very proud of myself to consult uh, all forms of uh, experts in the field, from going to the NHS, going to the hospitals, going to the doctors, as well as consulting my mates who are doing really good work out there with uh, mental health, with um, longevity and uh, how to just basically become a superhuman. So, Shaft Udin, this is how you overcame not getting a cold or a flu. I had a cold for uh, twice this winter season. I arrived in November November the 6th and I'm leaving on March the 1st uh, and I was only sick twice. This is a record. This has never happened in the history of Shaft. I am always ill. I was a sickly little child, like really weedy and that's just stuck with me forever. Uh, the only time when I'm not sick is when I'm in the Tantra bubbles. Like I'm in hot climates, we're all having sex, we're all dancing, we're all singing, we're always moving our body. So. I have an amazing brother, Daniel. Daniel Muller Gonzalez. He is the founder of Hale. He's a breathwork dude. He is a fucking genius level, uh, practical German man. He's like a centurion of breathwork. He's doing amazing work in Stockholm. I'm gonna put the link down below about Daniel. So I always meet him every time I come to Stockholm because he's like, like he's years ahead of me because he's lived here and stayed here. He's just had a newborn child. Well done, well done. He just performed at my um, Conscious Ways to Connect festival, which is a beautiful festival of intimacy and getting people together. And he said this and I messaged him saying, right, I don't want to get ill. And he sent me this message. I'm going to read it to you. Okay, so the way to overcome not being ill is Cold showers for at least 30 seconds, number one. Number two, add vitamin C and D3 to your diet. Number three, curcuma, ginger, and as a prevention, exercise of at least 20 minutes. Something that makes you sweat and more exhausting than just sex. And the key thing that he said was you'll fortify your health really fast. Remove the belief that the cold makes you sick. That is absolutely not true. So that was my guiding light. That was my blueprint on what to do when I was here. So every morning I'd have a morning practice and that was to have my coffee, coffee meditation, listen to motivational speakers to repattern my brain so I'm not in self-doubt but I'm using someone else's voice to override my voice of shit I'm in a city I'm gonna get ill uh, but I'm actually listening to believe in yourself you're amazing you could do it you're in a city by yourself and you will have the willpower to succeed you will become an amazing speaker which is everything I became. So I would do my mate, which is this rather than coffee. I drink that. Uh, have a litre of lemon water. With the coffee or the mate, I have enough energy to do my eight minute workout. I drink my litre of lemon water whilst I do it. 
Listening to motivational speakers, this helps me overcome self-doubt. I also get my body warm and I sweat. Then I have a cold shower. I wake up in the morning and do my mantras, 108 of these. Um, I do Om Namo Shiva, Om Namo Hanamate, Om Shri Mahalakshmi Ye Namaha, Om Shri Mahalakshmi Ye Swaha. Um, I do Om, Om, this is a lot of stuff by the way. I also do Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So this is all to calm the mind, come into the body and channel the energy of the deities. Uh, I do a new one which is because I'm learning to really embody what it is to be Shaft Uddin. Now I do Shaft Uddin, Shaft Uddin, Shaft Uddin to see the higher version of myself calling him in. I also do uh, my reprogramming, which is um, I love my life, I love my body, I love myself. I love my life, I love my body, I love myself. Or I do um, I am filthy rich for changing the world in a positive way and really feel it in my body so it gets me juiced up. Um, I also do this when I'm commuting. So I can listen to motivational speakers or I could just check my emails or I could do my malas. I also use the, uh, the dopamine hit of uh, the phone and scrolling to get me out of bed. It is hard to get out of bed when it's cold as fuck in Stockholm. So that's my morning practice. That's how I overcame not getting a cold or a flu, I only got it twice. The irony was when I got my cold, um, I started to tell myself, and this was like in January, hmm, you haven't been ill for a while, Shaft, this is weird. I kept on replaying it over and over again until I got sick. Weird, huh? Okay, number two thing that I always get when I come into the matrix. I get bleeding gums. My teeth go a bit darker. I don't know what to eat anymore. So what I did was I started oil pulling. I also have one of these things. One of these that I learned from Agama. Uh, they actually said this is the, uh, the one thing that you'll probably just do after our yoga training, uh, which is just scrape your tongue. Uh, salt into the gums and oil pulling for 20 minutes, which is coconut oil, put it in your mouth and 20 minutes is a really long time, by the way. So next thing was the big one. I got this tiny thing here. Um, it's known as blephritis. The NHS gave me this. So I have to clean my eyes all the time. So I need to massage my eyeballs. I need to do hot towel compression. I get cotton buds and uh, scrape uh, the tear ducts here uh, and wipe it as well. It's a lot of stuff to do but I did it in the first couple of weeks and haven't got anything since. I get this horrible condition where I get these growths under my eyelids and on my eyelids and then they scratch the surface of my eyes and I get ulcers and I will eventually go blind. This is when I leave to hot countries and then it just vanishes. I didn't know it was a cold that was stopping the tear, uh, the, the secretion of the oil uh, to stop flowing so it just freezes um, and blocks it and then the oil starts to build up and turns into these giant things. So what I learned was to do hot towel compressions to loosen the oil, use a cotton bud and hot water to scrape like the underpiece here, uh, and then I just couldn't be bothered to do that anymore. And now I just use um, the hot towel, because I had to boil water into a kettle and it was like really long. So I just use uh, my towel, uh, run it under the hot setting on the tap, and just like just scrape along here and along here and hold it there. I do that in the morning and at night times, but I'm super lazy now, so I just do it at the night in the morning now. And I haven't got anything since. Sometimes I just have to like scratch underneath here to get all the crust off, uh, and then I'm okay. And if I do get ulcers, which I haven't got because there's nothing scratching on the eyeball, I have an eye mask because I sleep with my eyes open like this. So I need to put this on. So the moisture stays in. Preventative measures. A bit like Sherlock Holmes trying to figure out what's going on. It has nothing to do with stress. Nothing. It's environmental, which is a really positive thing to figure out. 
Uh, the next thing is bad skin. My friend said, hey, get rosenip oil, get this, get that. External things to put on your face. None of that worked. It actually had everything to do with my diet. So on Koh Phang Yang, Eng's Baka and other places, we only have access to good food. For six years, I didn't cook. I get the best amazing high vibration foods locally sourced and I just eat whatever I want. It's amazing. So when I come back to a major city, you know, fast food over in Koh Phang Yang is like a high vibrational fruit juice which is freshly made. Nothing processed unless you go to the 7-Eleven buffet later at night. So here, oh, I need to eat something quick. I'll have anything. <coughs> eat anything I want. So I'd be eating kebab meat. I'd be eating Coca-Cola. I don't care because I just haven't I haven't eaten this stuff for so long. It's like, oh, it's so tasty. Donuts, cream, gray. Oh, and then bum, 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 bum. It's like, why am I getting all this stuff? I don't understand. Mm, more meat, more da, da, da. Uh, so I basically just like overdid it on anything. Uh, and I just got shit skin. In the end, I prayed to Shiva and Odin to f um, find me a nutritionist. In the end, I ended up living in a house, the Tantra Collective by the Sea, where I was running like all my amazing events. Uh, they provide food. So we have a pantry full of high vibrational foods and everything was vegan. Uh, everything was simple and easy to eat. So we just cook and I would just have this amazing diet and everything started to go. So annoyingly, diet does have a lot to do with it. I didn't know that. I was just in a place where it's just good food. Here there's a lot of options, but nothing's good. There are some good things, but I need to educate myself to find out where are the best places to eat. The next thing was the boils and things like that. Um, vitamin D tablets. That's all I needed to do to make sure that everything was okay. So that's how I overcame not being ill this winter season in Sweden. I did it. I overcame all of the things which the hippies said was stress, air pollution, um, relationship with my father and everything else. It had nothing to do with that. It's a very simple practical thing around the environment. I was cold. I needed to keep this warm. I had no idea how to eat. I needed to learn how to eat to get better skin. Um, and like the cold showers I don't know how it works, but it works. I had to uh, YouTube it and it, there's a, a really good explanations on why cold showers work. Um, I'm not ill anymore. I will be coming back here in May. I'm off to Koh Phang Yang to, uh, just to get some sun, <laughs> to uh, get rid of the final bits of my skin, to get nice bits in my nails again and get amazing hair. Um, my hair's actually gotten a lot longer now. Almond oil, I think that works. It also doesn't smell as much as coconut oil. So this is a message to Shaft Odin. This is how you overcame all of your illnesses uh, by being logical and not listening to hippies, by understanding your environment and being a Sherlock Holmes and discovering what works for you. And this definitely works for me because all of the illnesses I've had for the last six years have all gone. I did it. I'm very proud of myself of being able to uh, be quite calm, chilled and collected and just go, okay, I'm not going to panic uh, and I'm going to like just do this methodically. Um, a terrible thing has happened. You know the eight minute workout that makes me like this? Well, I fucked up my arms. <laughs> it's really bad. Like I've been holding these static positions and I, I had to have like acupuncture needles with electricity going in it and I was going zzz, 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 zzz. So I've actually fucked up myself by doing these very simple exercises which frustrates me a lot. So now I'm having to learn how to uh, heal myself uh, again without freaking the fuck out. So what I've been doing as an experiment is I've been uh, massaging just this arm and not this arm to see if this uh, yoni dearming technique works on my body, how it kind of healed my dad. So I've been doing this and uh, according to the physio people and everyone I've been talking to, this is 
60% better than this one. So self-massage does work. Also, the best thing that I did was, this was so bad I couldn't move it, uh, the electric shock therapy did work the best. So, I'm still not healed and I still can't do my 8 minute workout fully anymore. Um, so I will be using the same methods of being Sherlock Holmes on how to discover how to overcome this pain. But I want to get even bigger. I need to get more buff. So, thank you very much for listening, Shafted, and this is for you. Uh, and the people just moving to Sweden and Stockholm um, and trying to survive the winter, this is what helped me. And I hope uh, if you listen to it, it might help you. I've got one more event happening uh, this Friday. I hope you can make it. Tantra Connections. It's uh, a collaboration with my friend Nathaniel. There is a link below. So thank you all for watching and please subscribe below. I can't create conscious ways to connect without you. I've had an amazing, amazing winter season. My mission, my dream came true. If I could turn up to a random Western city like this and have a dream and get people connected to overcome mental illness, then anyone can do it. I feel that Stockholm soon will be oversaturated with people trying to get people to connect. It's all, it, I mean, it's already happened with all the Tantra stuff, it's amazing. Like, I have an idea, then the world has an idea. I've decided to actually make the, the next brand um, just Shaft Udin. So uh, instead of getting unicorns out there and sacred sexual Jedi's out there and conscious ketamine out there and Tantra out there, let's get Shaft Udin out there. So that's what I'm working on next. So if you're feeling juicy and alive and sexy, click on the links below, come to these events. I'm off to Kopangyang uh, to get healthy and fit, to become more in my power to be in greater service to Stockholm again in May. I'm gonna be teaching at the Stockholm Tantra Festival in May, so come along, and I've got a whole bunch of stuff happening when I come back. I'm also looking for someone to give me a house. I have a dream to live by a lake and turn your summer house into a business and a community center to get people connected, belonging. I need 144,000 people to follow me, to create a movement of connection. And I can't do it without you. So please subscribe and let's all start connecting in a beautiful, positive, safe way. Remember the biggest gift you could give each other is your presence. Mwah!